Hello, hello everyone. My name is Elise. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. We are doing my book hauls for January and February. These are late. I'm going to try and combine them. The last time I tried to combine a video, it didn't go well because it was so long and I ended up needing to split it into two. So hopefully that doesn't happen today and I can actually share all of these books in a single video but I'm probably going to do slightly shorter synopsis than normal so I can get through all of them. I think we have, oh gosh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 books to go through today. So let's just go ahead and dive right in so we don't waste any more time. Let's start with the January books. First up, we have a couple of orders for specific sales and, and those related things. This always happens in January. My January book haul is always large because there are so many end of the year sales in December that I try to take advantage. And I just know January is gonna be a large book haul. I roll with it, who cares? So I got three books from the half price sale from Barnes and Noble. I said this before, it's rare that I actually shop at Barnes and Noble, but I do always take part in their half price hardback sale at the end of the year. Most of the time I'm using that as a way to buy books that I've read from the library that prior year that I loved and want to actually get a copy of. And that's a little bit of what I did here. One of the books is definitely the case with that. And that is Death Valley by Melissa Broder. This is published by Scribner. And I read this in December last year. I really enjoyed it. It's actually my least favorite of the Melissa Broders that I've read, but still thoroughly liked what was going on here. And I own the other two that I've read and I wanted to add this to the collection. Plus I love this cover. And I do think while this is my least favorite as a whole of the three that I've read, I've also read the Pisces and Milk Fed. This is the one that has the most like specific quotes in it that I would like to save. So I'm thinking of going through and annotating. It has a lot of like philosophical paragraphs that had some things that were very meaningful to me and I wanted the book for that reason to be able to like go back and read those sections that I really loved. So that is Death Valley by Melissa Broder. This is about a woman who is a writer and her father is currently in the hospital. She's not sure what's going to happen to him and her husband is also chronically ill and she has to be a caretaker for him a lot of the time she's struggling with all of those things it's overwhelming to her so she goes to this motel in california in the desert to take a break from it all she goes on a hike and finds a cactus that she knows isn't a species of cactus that should be where she's at but she goes up to it anyway and it ends up being a doorway to this alternate world that's the setup um and like i said before it's very philosophical um it's really just her inner thoughts trying to process through her role as a daughter and a wife in the context of her specific situation. And yeah, really moving sections in this. So enjoyed it and would recommend. Next up in that same sale, we got a book that I have been wanting to get for a while. So when I saw it half priced, I was like, okay, it's now, now is the moment. And that is Penance by Eliza Clark. This one is published by Harper. This has been all over, I feel like. It's a take on a true crime novel that follows the story of a young, I think she's 17 year old girl, 16 year old girl, who is set on fire by three other girls. And it follows the aftermath of that case, I think from a range of POVs of people involved or that are impacted by this. I have not read Boy Parts by Eliza Clark, but I definitely want to read it. I've heard great things about it, but this one has just been getting such good buzz and I really wanted to read it. So I picked this one up as well. There is the cover. All right, and last one I picked up in that sale is Wellness by Nathan Hill. This one is published by Knopf and this is a picante beef baby, so it's over 500 pages, and I am planning to read it this year as part of my reading three books over 500 pages goal. 
This one I really picked up because everyone that I saw reviewing it on booktube was loving it and was saying that it's a complicated story about marriage and that is catnip for me. I love reading about the nitty gritty details of a marriage so I had to pick it up. It sounds like it's so for me. I have not read The Nix, which this author is very famous for. I haven't seen the show either. Or is it a movie? I don't know if it's a show or a movie, but I haven't seen it regardless. I'm just gonna read the smallest portion of the blurb and it sells that, says that it's a witty and poignant new novel about modern marriage, the often baffling pursuit of health and happiness, and the stories that bind us together. It's so many buzzwords for me. Again, I love books about marriages. I love books about wellness culture and how toxic that can be. And I love the metaphor of story in our lives and the stories that we say about ourselves, the stories that we say about other people and how that impacts how we view things. Love all of it. So I think this could be a real heavy hitter for me and I'm excited to get to this one hopefully in the next month or so. So that is Wellness by Nathan Hill. Then we have the Verso order. So this is another sale that I participate in at the end of every year. And Verso always does a sale and they tier it interestingly where depending on the number of books that you buy, the better the percentage off that you get. So the like top level is if you buy five or more books, you get 50% off of all of the books which is crazy. So I always save up some of the Verso books that I want for the end of the year, knowing I'm gonna buy them in the sale. So in January, I got four of the books. I was waiting on another one that was backlisted. It came in February, so you'll see that a little bit later. Um, but the first one is the only novel that I purchased. They do mainly nonfiction, but this is Crooked Plow by Itamar Vieira Jr. And this one is translated I believe. It's translated by Johnny Lorenz and again published by Verso. Here is the cover which I really enjoy and interestingly enough so I got this in January but this was just long listed for the International Booker so that is very fun and I'm happy for Verso that they got a book long listed and this one follows two sisters in Brazil. It's a Brazilian novel who find a knife under their grandmother's bed. And this knife has a pull on them. They like the power of having the knife. And then it says that it sparks an event of unspeakable violence between them. That is such an incendiary blurb. I am very interested. I'm a little worried about how violent this just might get, but I definitely want to attempt it and try and pick it up. So I'm very excited to get to this one. So that is Crooked Plow. Next up, we have The End of Policing. This is by Alex S. Vitale, and it's a nonfiction. The rest from Verso are gonna be nonfiction. This is the updated edition. There was a first edition a while back, um, and I believe this has an additional chapter at the end. And the reason that I picked this up, I have read a lot about police reform form, but I haven't read too much about actual police abolition, which is I, I know another part of the argument on needing change within the police system. So I wanted to educate myself a little bit more and see what other potential solutions might be. I'm hoping this will be a good deep dive. The font is so tiny though, so we'll see how we do with that. But yeah, end of policing. It is basically what it says it is. It's about um, the movement to defund the police and potential alternative solutions. All right, next up we have After Work, A History of the Home and the Fight for Free Time by Helen Hester and Nick Srinasek. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, but yeah, this is again, kind of as nonfiction does, what it says it is in the title. And this is talking about all of the unpaid work that happens within homes and some of the ways that's changing, some of the ways that we should be looking at domestic work in the home. And I'm really excited to get to this. I think it could be great. And it's something that I'm always trying to reassess in my own life because we do have limited time, like what we're going to 
prioritize and what we have to prioritize. So I'm excited to pick this one up. It's also shorter than I imagined it would be. So it could be potentially a quick read, who knows. And then the last Verso book that I got in January, again, there'll be another one in the February books, is Bodies Under Siege. This is by C.N. Norris, and the subtitle is How the Far-Right Attack on Reproductive Rights Went Global. And I believe this takes place from a UK perspective or a European perspective instead of the US. And it's talking about the origins of the anti-abortion movement in general. I think this could be very informative and again, shorter than I thought it was going to be. So I'm excited to have this one as well. And then lastly for January, we have a few books that I just picked up. One on a whim, one not on a whim. That is American Precariat, Parables of Exclusion. And this is a book that I talked about in my anticipated releases video at the end of last year. I can't quite remember. It came out in November last year. And this one is a collection of essays that are all about exclusion, like it says on the front, but also about freedom and who has access to that and what that even means. The essays in this are all curated by people who are currently or have been incarcerated. So I think that's such a great lens that we need to view this topic through. And I'm very excited to have this collection in my hands. So I'm hoping I'll be able to pick this one up soon. Oh, and I should say this one's published by Coffee House Press. I think I said where the rest were published from. So that is American Precariat. Excited to get to that one. A lot of nonfiction in January. And the last book is nonfiction as well. So this one, I'm blaming my partner slightly for why I got it. I already had a lot of books in January and I was like, okay, I shouldn't buy any more. Then my partner planned a date day for us, so lovely of him, and he took me to a bookstore. He knows me. So I had to pick up a book, you know, I had to. And I tried to stick to the sale section and I found an Annie or no on sale. This one is Getting Lost. It's translated from the French by Alison Strayer and it's published by Seven Stories Press. Last year I went on an Annie or no kick. I read four of her books. So I'm trying to pick up all of them slowly but surely along the way. I haven't read this one yet and it's the longest one that I'll have picked up so far. I'm gonna take a break from Annie Erno for a little bit. I said this at the end of last year. They were starting to feel a bit samey to me because I was reading them too quickly in succession, I think. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break but I'm definitely gonna get to this at some point throughout the year. So that is Getting Lost. Happy to have found that on sale. All right, okay, we're only 15 minutes in, thank the Lord. So we're gonna move into the February books. So the first book that I got, well, let me talk about the pre-orders first, like I normally do. So I had three pre-orders come in in the month of February. The first one is The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Kay O'Neill. This is published by Oni Press. I have already read this, so you'll be seeing it in my wrap up for the month. Here's a little bit of the art style. It's so lovely. This is the last in the Tea Dragon trilogy. It's a graphic novel series that follows tea dragons, which are these cute little animals. You can see one down there that are like these mini dragons that grow tea leaves from their back. And they have, they're partnered with like guardians who help take care of them and they bond very intensely to their guardians, but it's also about the guardians' lives and their coming of age story. Very heartwarming, very comforting and cozy. They're just wonderful. I'm so glad to have my collection finished for these books and that I've read them all now. So that is The Tea Dragon Tapestry. Next pre-order we got is another nonfiction. It's from Europa and that is The End of Love. This is by Tamara Tenenbaum. And the subtitle for this one is Sex and Desire in the 21st Century. That subtitle alone, it's enough to sell me anything that is about desire, I want to read it. And this is talking about the contemporary understanding of romantic love and how the contradictions of inherited traditions and technology affect the way we build relationships. That's right, this one does have a lens through technology, I think, for a number of the sections. So excited to get to 
this one and learn a bit, little bit more about how technology intersects with modern love. It's also very petite, this book. So I think that will be nice to hold in my hands. It's also very tiny font. Oh God, I hate this. Like, I hate that books are doing such tiny font. I need bigger font people, but we'll make it work. So that is the end of love. And then the last pre-order for February is Council Culture. I'm so excited for this one. It's probably, if not my most anticipated fiction release of the year, one of them. And this one's by Kim Hee Jin, and it's translated from the Korean by Jamie Chang. It's published by Restless Books. And Restless Books has some bangers coming out this year. I'm so excited for a lot of their catalog. This one follows a therapist who is very successful. She's on this weekly television program. And one week, it's a scripted comment that she makes. She wasn't the one to necessarily come up with it, but she makes a scripted comment about another public figure and the comment is negative. And then that public figure later commits suicide and she starts getting canceled. So cancel culture, it's a play on cancel culture. And she is like in a deep depression. She's lost basically everything. And then she meets this young girl one day. I think they're like in the park or something like that. And they start to develop a friendship together. And that helps to bring her back into the world a little bit. So I'm very interested in this one. I think cancel culture, is so fascinating to think about it's and so problematic in a lot of ways and i i'm hoping that this will be a really good deep dive into that and i can't wait to get to this book so another little itty bitty one as well all right and then there's three other books that we have for the month of February. The first one is The Birthday Party. This is by Laurent Mauvignier and it's translated by Daniel Levin Becker. This is on the Republic of Consciousness US and Canada prize for this year, but I have been wanting to read this since last year. And I will say this is the only book that I guessed on the short, on the long list. Um, I did a predictions video that I'll link down below, but this is the only one that I got right. And last year I went to an event that Transit Books, who publishes this, was at, and they were talking about some of their upcoming releases. And the spokesperson spoiled the book for me, which I was so upset about at the time. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a while to see if I can forget. I have not forgotten, but I still really want to read it. I definitely want to get to this one soon. I am currently reading the shortlist for the prize, and this is one of the only ones I have left. So I'm going to get to this at some point, but it's it's long and the font again is very tiny. This one takes place over the course of a single day and it's about a birthday party, but there's something very like ominous and tense going on at the birthday party. It's taking place in rural France. As the day goes on, there are strangers stalking the house and it says it unleashes a nightmarish chain of events. So that is the birthday party. I've heard great things about this and I'm very excited to pick it up soon. So there's that one. The stack is going to fall over off screen. I'll try to rectify that. Okay, it's wobbling, but I think it's fine. Next one, we have the other Verso book that came in in the month of February, and that is They Call It Love. It came in slightly damaged, but it's okay, it happens. This is by Alva Gottby, and the subtitle of this is The Politics of Emotional Life. Again, by Verso, nonfiction. And I think this is talking about the emotional labor of love and who performs that and how we might need to start thinking about that a little bit differently. So very curious to get into this. Again, also slim. And I think this could go a couple of ways. I think I could love this or hate it, but I wanted to take a chance on it. So that is They Call It Love. And lastly, we have a surprise book that got added to my TBR in the month of February because I picked it up from a little free library near me. I had seen this in the little free library before months ago. 
and thought about picking it up because I have really considered reading this, but I didn't. And since then it has plagued me. I really try to only pick out little free library books if I really want to read them. And I only take a handful out a year because of that reason. But this one I regretted not pulling out. So when I saw it come back, I had to pick it up. And that is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This one is published by Harper. And of course, lots of people know this. It is a prize winning darling. It won the Women's Prize last year. It won the Pulitzer. It tied to win the Pulitzer last year. And it is a modern retelling of David Copperfield. It takes place in Appalachia and follows a young male character who's struggling with substance abuse issues and poverty and who knows what else. But yeah, I really do want to read this. It's another big one. And when I saw it in the Little Free Library again, I had to grab it. So I don't have plans in the immediate future to get to this, but I am going to try and read it at some point this year. It's a little damaged. It has some um, humidity damage. I mean, I live in Seattle. There, There's going to be some humidity damage on some of the books in the little free libraries. I'm okay with that. Um, and again, it's a free book, so I'm not going to complain about it. I know so many people have enjoyed it and I have high hopes for myself as well. So those are all of the books that I picked up in the last couple of months. Please let me know if you have read any of these and what you've thought about them if you've read them or if you're just interested in some of these books. Maybe you're seeing them for the first time. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.